Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report. I'm A.J. Monti, Senior Technical Analyst with Market Rebellion, and this is a one-year daily candle chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, ticker symbol DIA. Now, for the record, just know that we've hit all of our targets from last week's report. And if you had a chance to watch the midweek report, I talked about the diamonds and that we would most likely go back up for the rest of the week and test the high from last week. And not only did we do that, but we moved all the way up to this 20 period moving average. Now, what does that mean for next week? Well, it's important that we keep an eye on not just the candle, but the volume. And we have a very slight drop in volume over the last three days, which tells us that the buyers are not as motivated as they were at the beginning of the week. So that is a slight sign that the buying pressure might subside just a bit. But down below, you could see that the stochastic is still heading up and the CCI down here is just about to cross that momentum line. So moving forward, I believe that Monday and Tuesday, we will most likely move up. And I'm going up just a bit here, just like we did last week. When I said we would move up and then we'll have to see what happens with that volume. I do believe we'll start to pull back before Friday. That's when the jobs numbers come out and then we'll have to see how that affects the markets. But going into the following week, I am very bearish and expecting a pullback. But I want to take this one week at a time. Take a look at the candles. We project that out and then trade accordingly. Now, as I mentioned last week, the majority of the folks that follow me on this weekly market report are option traders and swing traders. So they're most interested in pivot points and short term trading legs. So again, this is going to help them into next week. Now, if we look at IWM, which is the small cap ETF, it's going to be the same scenario. We have a crossover that momentum line on the CCI. The stochastic is heading up, but the big difference here in IWM is that we have an increase in volume on the way up and a close over that moving average. So I think IWM could actually go up to test this resistance level. And then I do believe that we're going to see a drop in volume because already we have four green candles in a row. So if we come in Monday and Tuesday, more or less hot with green candles, that's going to extend that long stretch of green and then we'll be long overdue for a red at that particular point in time. So again, if you're long, I would be trailing your stops up. I would be taking profits on any kind of a weakness. And if you're short, especially with option traders, I would be patient with a retest at this resistance point. Again, keeping an eye on the drop in volume. If we see that, then you could add to your shorts. Today was a very interesting day. We saw a steady increase throughout the day in all markets, but it looked to me more like a short squeeze, a slow bleeding out of the short positions as they covered. And I don't see new investors coming in. And I'll get to that in a moment when we look at the economic data. All right, so let's look at the cues. Again, we hit the targets from last week, as you can see right here. And then on Wednesday, I said we would probably drop a little bit. If you have access to that, go back and listen to that recording because I said we'd most likely drop first and then pivot back up. Now, the other interesting thing about the cues is that we gapped up today. So now the market is caught between two gaps, a gap above the market and a gap below the market. So what do I think we could see Monday and Tuesday? I think we're going to go up to fill the gap on Monday and Tuesday, and I'm going to do a two parter here and then come right back over the following days to fill the gap on the downside. So this is a great opportunity for swing traders and option traders that are looking for those pivot points. Now, if we look at SPY, this is the S&P 500 ETF. It's going to be the same scenario as what we saw on the queues. Again, a gap up, slightly higher volume. I do believe we're going to continue a little bit higher right here to that possible gap fill to the left right there. And then I think we're going to turn down. So it's rare that I do two part forecasts like this in multiple markets, but that's exactly where I think we're going to go next week is that we're going to keep going higher just a little bit, wait for the jobs report. I think that'll disappoint economically. And then we have to set ourselves up to more Fed talk 
in the week after that. It's going to be the week of with the 13th, 14th, 15th. Don't get me pinned to that date, but it's in that week. I don't have my economic calendar up right now, but it's in that week, the following week. All right, so now that we've hit that upside target, I'm going to erase that and just leave these forecast lines in place. Now, finally, as we look at the VIX, this is interesting because look at the VIX down below. It's testing these support levels. This support level down here has been well established. And I think that we could go a little bit further down here on the VIX. Not much, but I think we could go further. And then we're going to start to move up. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to redraw this downside little bit of a tag down there. And I'm going all the way back up to my target that was established before. So let's do a two-parter on the VIX as well. A downside target of 1805 and then an upside target of 2301. If I didn't give you that target for the spiders, let me do that for you right there. Upside target is going to be 40790 and then a pullback to 40111 right and that's going to be in place if i missed any of the other targets i'll review this video for sure and i'll put it in the comments page so that you traders have those exact numbers now let's talk a little bit about the economy this is a graph that's showing the two-year treasury yield and i talked about this the week before last with the inverted yield curve now what you have to understand is that bonds right now are the cheapest they've been since 2007. does that year ring a bell We'll look down below and you'll see 2007 was the same level and then we proceeded into what was the one of the biggest down moves of that time into 2008 2009 the markets lost 50 percent of that value in that one year period so we have to really watch out we are in that danger zone with regard to bonds and that inverted yield curve now another thing is you got to keep an eye on what's happening in car loans and used car market especially this is from Bloomberg Americans are falling behind on their car payments and this is at a higher rate than what we saw in 2009 remember that was at the end of that bear market but most importantly we are in a big bubble when it comes to subprime auto lenders because they're folding what this means is that we have not learned that lesson from the subprime mortgage bubble back in 2007 and 2008. This is happening all over again. But the problem is if you dig into the story and look at the bubble that's forming here, this actually could be worse than the mortgage bubble that we had back then because we already have an inflated real estate market and one domino falls into the next, which falls into the next. And I've been telling people, keep your eyes open for that black swan event, whatever that may be. It could be China. It could be the economy. It could be interest rates continuing to go higher. It could be a Fed surprise, whatever it may be. That's why I tell people, anyone who's thinking that we're back into a bull market and all is safe and secure, you need to be protecting yourself on the way down and trailing your stops on the way up. And that means protecting your profits as well. Now, another thing that I find very interesting and even confusing is that you may have heard about the derailment back here in Ohio. Now, this was the story that came out and it was buried very, very quickly. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because if you look at what happened in Ohio and the fallout from that chemical spill, that this is not the first derailment that we've seen. It's, a, it's the first of a series of derailments. In fact, earlier this week, we had another derailment in Florida. Again, it missed the headline news, but it's happening. There was another one in Germany just days before the Florida derailment. And the reason this is such a significant event with regard to our economy is if you look at where the spill was, see that little X, represents where the derailment took place. It's, it's almost due west of Pittsburgh and a bike ride away from the Ohio River. Now, the other reports that are coming up is that they're finding very large numbers of wildlife and animals and cattle that are dying as a result of this spill. And again, the threat is this. If you take a look at where the Ohio River, where it feeds into, it feeds right into the Mississippi, so this chemical spill starting right here could work its way right into the lower states 
and contaminate all this farmland that's in the middle and in between those points. So what could that mean economically? Well, it will most definitely affect food prices, depending on whether or not it hits the cattle ranches and the beef market. But again, when you're connecting these dots, I, listen, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm just connecting the dots. That's what an analyst does. And you look further into the story, there was a bomb that was found right next to the railroad tracks behind this church here in Holmesburg. And then I dug into the story a little bit more. And, and hopefully you folks get a chance to, to read this or even look at this video. This is fascinating. Go on Twitter and look up this woman here, Dahl. She, she has a radio station. She talks quite a bit about this. But what she has found is fascinating because there are these tanker rail cars that are lined up as far as the eye can see, right smack dab in the middle of prime agricultural territory in California. And none of the ranchers have ordered these cars to be there. They don't know what's in them. They don't know who dropped them off and they can't get any information. Again, something you have to pay attention to, whether or not this turns out to be a problem for the ranchers or the agricultural industry, we'll have to find out. But again, stay abreast of these stories because these are things that are not being talked about. In particular, you know, if you look at what happened with the Ohio fires, uh, this is in a metal alloy factory. Again, look at the date. This is not too long ago and this is right on the heels of the derailment that we saw in Ohio as well. So something's going on in Ohio. And not only that, but you know, look at what the what's happening with these these uh, chicken and poultry plants with these unusual numbers of fires popping up. Now some people have commented to me in the comment box that this is a normal thing that happens with different feed stock and and things go on fire, but I just find a very unusual pattern here. And remember, when I'm looking at charts, I connect the dots, I look at the indicators, I weigh the evidence. And this just seems very, very suspicious to me and what the, how that could affect the general market. So keep an eye on that as you're watching your charts. And finally, if you are hanging on this far already in the presentation, hang on one more minute and I'll give you the instructions on how to get your hands on my seven point trading checklist. You could take your phone, hold your camera to the little code right here, and it'll bring you to the website, or you can go down below to the marketrebellion.com forward slash checklist. Finally, thank you so much for liking and sharing and commenting. I know this report came out a little bit later, but I'm traveling today. It's my father-in-law's 90th birthday tomorrow. We're down here in the Keys celebrating with the family. And I got this out late, but better late than never, right? So again, thank you again for liking, commenting, subscribing. And I keep that going because it really helps grow the channel. And I have all of you to thank for that. So have a good weekend. We'll talk to you on Wednesday. So long. There is no more damaging formula than to mix emotions with money. Listen, we're made up of emotions. We have fear. We have stress. The trading checklist helps take that all away. And now, wow, take a deep breath, relax, and enjoy the ride. You might be completely foreign to technical analysis. You may not even know what a bullish engulfing candle is or a shooting star. That does not matter. The great thing about what I'm showing you right now is I'm taking 40 years of experience here and I'm breaking it down to seven points that you can follow through a trading checklist. Look at any stock, any ticker symbol using the seven point checklist that I have and determine who is in control of that price action. I'm AJ Monty and this is my seven point trading checklist.